Man, I'm so tired of having to grow this just so I can think about running an E85 tune. I feel like I'll never get there. Are you tired of having to grow your own corn just so you can run an E85 tune? Me too. <laughs> and that's why today we are installing a flex fuel kit on the Mark 8 GTI. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today something super cool that I'm really excited about. It's a flex fuel kit for uh, the Mark 8 GTI. If you guys don't know, I live out here in Utah and there's not really a whole lot of e-pumps out here. You can't find E85 hardly anywhere. There's a couple shops that sell it. And then I think there's one pump out in Ogden that sells it. Paisley, where'd you go? Where did my child go? There you are. No, we don't need zip ties today. We didn't break anything. <laughs> Thank you. So if you guys don't know, it's pretty scarce out here in Utah, which I think is what makes this a really good candidate for the flex fuel kit because if we go to travel, if we do happen to go past Ogden and we can pick up some E85, we're still able to run the tune and make power on E85 without switching maps with the computer, which is the really cool part about this. Another thing is it takes your power gauge, your kilowatt gauge in your display, and it actually changes that. And that's going to be your E rating it's going to read it and display. I do believe the cruise control has to be shut off for that. I will confirm before I post this and you'll have a little, a little thing right here. So without further ado, being able to run E, being able to run E or 91 without ever having to switch maps yourself and being able to see your E rating in your dash integrated with factory, with the factory cluster, that's pretty dope. So we're gonna go ahead, get started, unbox everything. First and foremost, we are gonna pull the fuel pump fuse. That way we don't accidentally prime the system because you are going to have to cut into those fuel lines. You don't want it to have a bunch of pressure and spray you because it's not a fun smell to get out. But we're gonna pull that pump fuse we're gonna unbox everything. This is also going to plug into your sound actor. You ready to run some corn juice? Huh? Also, she went camping and uh, decided to get in a fight with some stairs. The, uh, the trailer stairs that my in-laws have kind of took a bite out of her face a little bit. She was a little overconfident and uh, misjudged herself. I already grabbed the box. Okay, so I'm gonna pull everything out. We're gonna get started. Uh, this should be pretty easy, actually. It's a, a pretty plug and play kit. There is a little bit of cutting to do, like I said, but overall, it should be pretty straightforward. So everything in here is packaged super well, and it's all independent of one another. You have your flex fuel sensor itself. These are gonna be fuel fittings that you are going to need, and these are going to be crimp clamps that are going to go on the fuel lines. Come over to our box here. You're gonna have this nice presentation of the actual unit that is going to send signal to the car and read it from the flex fuel sensor. Set that aside, open this guy up, and you have your harness. So this is going to plug directly into your little unit here, your module, and then into the flex fuel sensor. And this is actually how your flex fuel sensor is going to get power. That is going to pull it from the sound actor. I do have my sound actor disabled, so I don't know if I'll have to re-enable it. And then one more thing, we have our actual flex fuel bracket, and this is going to allow us to mount it in the engine bay and have a nice clean look. I do believe it utilizes that bolt right there for the coolant reservoir. I will double check, but I'm pretty sure that that's the spot that it is intended to go. 
I did just go ahead and pull the fuse, started the car, and ran it out of fuel, so we don't have any fuel in the lines. It is that one. You can see the silver terminal on it. I'll place it in its spot just like so. Just pull it out, run the car for a few seconds. Car will then die because you don't have any fuel, and then you're good to go. So that's out of the way. We're going to go ahead, come over to the passenger side of the car. This is how we're going to access the sound actor. We're going to remove this cow panel and weather strip here. Just kind of pull it back, just like so. This is going to pop up. Be very careful with how it goes into the windshield. If you push too hard on it going back in, you can crack the windshield. Uh, I've seen it a couple times when I did windshield repairs. We're going to slide this guy out. The sound actor should sit right up underneath that wiper arm and uh, we should be able to just plug into it. This cowl piece is now out of the way, which is going to give us access to our sound actor. This is going to be our sound generator. I think that's what that means in English. Um, it translated from German. But that's where this harness is going to tee off of. And uh, that's where we're gonna pull our power for our unit. What I'm doing now is I'm removing the windshield wipers. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier and it doesn't take that much more time to do. There are two 13 millimeters and there's plastic nut covers on top of them. Uh, once you get those off, you have access to the 13s. Windshield wipers are actually pretty easy to get off most of the time, just like that. You hit them a couple times on the hinge, not terribly hard because you can't crack the windshield, but um, just enough to break that side loose. We'll set these off to the side. You do not want to put anything up in between the wiper arm and the windshield. You will crack it. Big no-no there. Um, now we can go ahead and actually pull this portion out as well. Just enough gain access to this side. If you come around here, you can see that that plug sits all the way back in there. And so it's kind of a pain in the butt to get to unless you pull this side off. So we got this plugged in. Super easy once you get it unplugged, especially if you pull both sides of that cow like I did. We're gonna run this guy over through here. And I'll probably pull this little bolt on this piece of sheet metal. That way we can slide them up under there and have them follow the factory harness. We'll have them sit somewhere right there for now. Now we're to the point, you can take your cowling, move it out of the way because we're gonna have to have access to this side of the fuel line. And so what we're going to do, we're going to cut this fuel line and make room for our flex fuel sensor, which will sit right there. And then our module will sit off of this nice branded bracket. It'll sit up just off of there. It uses factory hardware, so we're all good there. And then it'll all plug and play. And from there, we go ahead, we flash our flex fuel tune, cross our fingers, wish upon our lucky stars, and maybe we might be able to run the 85. I'm looking for some snips so I can cut the fuel hose. Um, having a wee bit of trouble finding them. But what we're gonna do just like I said before, cut this fuel hose. One side will go in here. We'll leave some extra off of this side. That way it can come around enough to get into both hose connectors. As soon as I find snips, we can do that. But um, until then, until that point, we're searching. Did you get it? Yeah, I think so. We're... Uh, Screwing that guy in right now. This was the best way I found to mount it. Keeps it kind of just out of the way. And then, as long as we did everything right, that light should turn green when we turn the car off. Now we'll go ahead, we'll put everything back together on this side, get it all buttoned up.
we'll get in the back, get in the car, flash the tune over, and then if we did everything right, like I said, that green light should come on, and then our performance meter in the dash should also read ethanol content. So we've now got the car hooked up to the battery tender, and this is just going to maintain our charge, our voltage, throughout the tuning process, we're gonna jump in the car. I've showed you all this before, so I'm not gonna go over it again. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. So I'm gonna grab the laptop and the tuning cable, jump in. We'll get it flashed and make sure everything works. You're helping? Look behind you. Look, look behind you. Are you helping? Say no, I cause you trouble. I cause you trouble. Well, we are in the middle of flashing. We had to switch laptops because ours is just too old. Wasn't up for the task anymore. Even though we've done it before, it just was not not happy. So we switched laptops. Now we should be good to go. Well, after switching laptops because the one that I have is just so outdated and old and slow, we were finally able to get it flashed. I'm gonna start the car and this should give us hopefully a green light along with an ethanol reading. Right now it's saying our ethanol rating is about nine, which sounds about right because we have about 10% E added into our fuel here. And we do have a green light, which is giving us confirmation that the unit is working. So we made the voyage out here to uh, Ogden, Utah. This is the closest place to me that has E85. About an hour and a half drive. Um, I'm not quite as low as I would have liked for um, for our E run. So it'll probably be closer to like E60, E65. I'll check the Unitronic parameters, make sure I'm still good to, uh, to run it. If not, I'll do a couple laps around uh, really just the neighborhoods here just to burn some some more off and then uh, we can go ahead and try. But I'm gonna check that real quick. As long as I'm good, I'm gonna fill up and uh, we'll call it a day and see how it goes. Just a side note, this is the first time that I've ever had a vehicle capable of running E. So this is gonna be my very first E85 fill up, which uh, is probably a silly thing to be excited about, but I am excited. So there's that. It does say an E60 blend is okay which will probably be right around what I'm going to be at. So I won't get the full full effect, like I said, but this will be fun. It'll be fun for me. It'll satisfy the little child inside of me for running E85. I have this wonderful kilowatt gauge, your power gauge. When your cruise control is turned off, it shows you so this is cruise on, it functions just as normal. You switch it to off, and that should be our E content. So there is about, I don't know, a 2% difference between this and the app. That goes up, we can go ahead and run the tune. I guess we already have the flex tune, but we can go ahead and run the car. Another cool feature that Unitronic has added I will, uh, I will switch the display here. As you now get an accurate boost reading and your coolant temp is also less of an on-off gauge and more of an accurate reading gauge. The true reading, a true output for your coolant and a true output for your boost that you're making. What do you think about that, P? <gasps> Currently sitting at right here 49 e49 so still waiting for that number to go up and then we can start getting on it i'm gonna let it sit here for a moment and uh hopefully it goes back up if not i will drive around and fill up with more e85 i tried to make sure that i was close enough to needing gas that it wouldn't be a problem but i don't know if i did enough looking like a mess we ran out of daylight yesterday, so what we're doing is we're finishing up today. Got the GoPro, we're gonna get some driving footage. Uh, we are right at 60, which is our threshold for our E-Tune, our Flex Tune. So I'm gonna go ahead, set the GoPro up, get some driving footage, and uh, 
just kind of have a little bit of fun. If you guys have tuned a car before, you know the difference between a stock and a and a stage one tune. That that's a pretty big jump. I would say this is pretty equally as significant. It's uh, it's definitely a big difference than just 91, which I guess should have been expected, especially based off the power numbers on their website. But it it's definitely it, it's well worth it to me. Um, granted, I don't live in a place that has E85 close by but that's why this kit exists and why this works perfectly for my application so the car's still not warm we're gonna warm her up a little bit but this is always a fun turn here on my commute back from my second job it's just a nice little on ramp onto the freeway. If you guys like these driving style or POV shots, let me know if there's something you think I can do better as far as getting these shots. Also, by all means, let me know. I'm always open to criticism. I don't, uh, I don't deal a whole lot with people um, just being straight up negative. If you want to be constructive, absolutely drop a comment down below and I will respond. But if you're just straight up negative, typically I ignore those comments. So, hopping onto the freeway here, we can give her some juice. into fourth gear a little bit so there's a spot over here it's a pretty fun little road it's like a, a back road there's usually not too many people on it so we're gonna go ahead take her out over there that way we're not disturbing anybody and we're not being pricks and uh, we're just gonna have a good time now it's not too terribly long but it is a uh, it is just a nice nice little road to to just party on so we are in third gear i'm sure you guys can see it on my dash Let's see if we can't get one from second you guys are going to be able to tell maybe if we put the uh, video just from the stage one tune and this next to each other we'd be able to see a difference but my butt dyno is definitely telling me that there's more there and uh, unfortunately like I said earlier in the video we have not been able to run the full e-tune because I was not completely empty so She just goes. She just keeps on pulling too. She just keeps wanting it. All right, and uh, like I said, not too long of a road, but that's uh, that's pretty much the end of it. Now we're getting into some newer housing area, so calm down be respectful and uh, head back to the house and conclude the video so all in all super easy install a little bit time consuming I would say plan for about an hour hour and a half maybe and then another 30 minutes for the tune pretty straightforward easy install well worth the money in my opinion it, it, it completely changed the car and um, this, if you are in a area where you can frequent an E85 pump, this would probably work really well for you. Um, if not, then maybe if you have the money, consider doing it in case you go on vacation, if you travel a lot, 
um, whatever the situation may be. Pretty, pretty cool little deal there. Um, the, the product itself is amazing. The packaging is amazing. Unitronics team is pretty great too. They're uh, always super quick to respond and get back to me. So without further ado, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Austin. I will catch you next time. Peace.